You know, for the longest time, there was one food that I thought was banned here in the States. But apparently there's a version that is available here stateside. Iron Brew. What's that? Iron Brew is basically, it's a, uh, it's a fizzy drink from Scotland. And it's banned because of a dye that's in it that has been shown to cause hyperactivity. And the best evidence that I can give for it is this. It's from a co-optional podcast. There it is. Iron Brew. Freaking Iron Brew! Yeah, so... Oh yeah, rest in peace, TV. I'll just go ahead and show you. Yeah. Iron Brew. Or the brew. Uh, Haley sent me a whole box worth of candy from uh, England. I, I have some of them, like Boost. Oh, Boost! That is. Yeah, Boost is Boost like well. it's like Red Bull chocolate, essentially. It, what? That that's sounds a brilliant gross. idea. I challenge you to eat an entire Boost and not feel like you're just kind of completely bogged down by how dense the thing is. Oh my gosh! Stick, eat it. Stick the eat whole it. thing in your mouth and try yes. and eat it. Go yes. on. Yes. <laughs> I. My mouth is filled with chocolate, but that's okay. Cause Lucky Eddie sent me some <laughs> iron brew. Oh, well done. <laughs> I don't feel so well right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. You stuffed down the boost too quickly and then chased it with Hold iron on. brew. Delicious. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> so someone pointed out something interesting, by the way. That iron brew is illegal uh, because it has a certain food coloring that is banned in the U.S. But so what you're saying is I'm, I'm breaking the law right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, well, uh, how, how delicious is that illegality? I, I am so bad, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trouble. Wash out, guys. We got a badass over <laughs> here. Badass. All right, let's do some news, shall we? There's not really a lot. makes fun of me for eating on this. You're not supposed to be eating on the show. Jesse right ate there, an entire eat. candy bar. Yeah, but that was oh, for no. entertainment purposes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That appears to be healthy whoa. stuff. What is it's it? It's cashew chicken and rice. Really good. <laughs> so let's talk about our analysis of Metacritic. Yes, Dodger. Okay. Can we talk about because I know that a lot of people trust Metacritic, but uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me ask my question. Stop. Hold yourself. So you cashew eating. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm in a bad mood today. You are. <laughs> Fucking iron, bro! <laughs> <laughs> and you're now hyperactive. I think because... <laughs> Just feel too many feelings when you drink iron, bro. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Do we need a this moment? This stuff is the single best! This stuff is amazing! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I feel great right now! <laughs> um... I'm gonna drink some more of this. Go. Chug, 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 chug. It was like maybe the first time I drank a balls energy drink. Balls. It's like before energy drinks were like a part of my like natural diet. Yeah. <laughs> like I drank a balls and I'm just like, holy crap. Oh. I've never felt so awake in my entire life. Uh. I was like, is this what cocaine's like? <laughs> uh. Uh, rest in peace, TV. And rest in peace, co-optional podcast. Uh, these were fun times. And I just... I miss them. But, oh well. Fuck cancer, dude. Mm -hmm. Fuck cancer. Anyway, Sam Onella is here to tell us about some banned and controversial foods. I wonder if he'll mention Iron Brew on here. Oh. Maybe? We'll see. But by the way, anything that's banned like that, you can order it online. Yes, you can. That's how we got Iron Brew. We actually still... got a pack of Iron Brew for like a live stream one time, and we cracked them open, and we all just like clinked, and then just like downed it. We're just like, tastes like a cream soda. I have to get me some and try it. Tonight. It's not bad. I'm still uh, planning to eventually, at one some point, like. Hopefully to help me quit smoking altogether because I quit where I started basically. Yeah. I need to order me a box of clove cigarettes. 
because they're banned in the U.S. and you can't get them in cigarette form anymore. You can only get the, c- or the c- <laughs> cigar. Cigarillo. And which is not as good. And unfortunately, I will admit that, like the Dijon Blacks, mm. I miss those, dude. I miss those so much. They were so good. Yep. Uh, well, anywho, some banned and controversial foods. I think some some various cheeses are going to be on here because I know that there's one cheese. I think it's called Munster. There's like a form of Munster cheese that's just like, it, it's got like parasites in it. Uh, I know sure. there's like a type of cheese that's considered to be almost alive because of the bacterial content. In it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's similar to what I'm. I'm pretty sure about. Munster you can get here. I don't think it's banned. I can't remember. I honestly, my brain, my brain's all over the place. But you know who else's brain is all over the place? Salmonella. Yeah, so let's uh, check out these banned and controversial foods. Take it away. Hey, Majors. So I'd like to start off with a little biology lesson. When a species finds itself living on an island, it can start to evolve in strange ways based on the different pressures applied by the new environment. This is called island syndrome, and while it can manifest in a yes. lot of ways, the biggest driving force is often a lack of predators. For example, the dodo lost its ability to fly since there was nothing to flee from. The saint killed a field mouse got twice as big since it no longer had to hide. And with no one around to bully them, the Sardinians started putting maggots in their cheese. Meet Kazumartsu, literal That's translation, it. Rot- Kazumartsu. That's just... Rotten cheese. It's made by taking a perfectly good wheel of pecorino and letting a special type of fly lay eggs in it. The fly babies then work to partially digest the cheese, rendering it goopy and wet and maybe quite tasty and worm-filled. Now, cheese as a concept is already quite suspect. It's clotted milk that you fill with bacteria and mold and let sit for a while. But cheese is safe and delicious. Cheese is my friend. I trust cheese. So my guard would be down around Kazumartsu. I've learned to look past a cheese's childhood. Strange upbringings are what give them their care Character. But it turns out, those maggots are still alive. And if you don't chew well enough, they can cause enteric myiasis, which is a fancy term for fly larvae living in your intestines. Symptoms are similar to food poisoning, except with the added psych- I was about, fuck no with a side of chips. Jesus, that is, no. If someone brought that, okay, if someone brought that cheese to my house, it's like, oh dude, you aren't gonna believe how much I had to pay for this. I am taking it out back, dousing it with gasoline, and setting that shit on fire. <laughs> Cause fuck that, dude. I ain't do I ain't dealing with that. Psychic pain of knowing that, again, your bowels are full of squiggly new friends. It's for this reason that Kazumartsu is banned in the EU and elsewhere. A black Thank market God. still exists, which is wild, and it's not a small one. In 2019, the illicit Kazumartsu trade was estimated to be worth 2 to 3 million euros annually. Personally, I would Who just do Who would want that? I don't understand how there's such a demand for such a gross thing. How would- why would- oh my God. This cheese must taste like you're having sex, like, or something. Well, uh, <laughs> Prohibition style, like, definitely don't put oh, these yeah, fly eggs on this sumptuous wheel of pecorino. But if you do, you absolutely shouldn't keep it warm and damp for a week. But although it's traditional to leave the larvae alive when you eat your mag and cheese, some consumers still oh, prefer yeah. them dead, shockingly. In that case, one puts the cheese in a sealed bag, and when the maggots run out of oxygen, they writhe around and fling themselves all over the place. This is heard as a distinct pitter-patter against the walls of the bag, and when the sound stops, the contents are ready to eat, like popcorn. Shark fin soup is one most of us have heard about already, mostly in reference to its effect on shark populations and the wastefulness that goes into making it. Until recently, though, I never yeah, looked into the nature of the dish. I'll everyone that, obviously, I am terrified of sharks, and... Sometimes people will phrase it as, I hate sharks, but I don't hate sharks. I don't wish ill on any living thing that is not inherently evil. Okay, I was about to say, it'd be like... I wish uh, ill okay. will on people that are inherently pieces of shit. But... I wish ill will upon, upon rapists. Mm. I wish ill will upon them in every facet. I want them to all die in a fire... Or rot in jail for the rest of their lives, getting absolutely just railroaded by anyone and everyone who will take advantage of them. 
Fuck those assholes. But I don't like the fact that people will just, like, take a shark, cut its damn fin off, and yeah. put it back in the ocean for it to drown. That's like, bullshit. That's fucked up, man. That is absolute bullshit. It's like, is, does it mean, mean there's less sharks that I have to worry about? Well, I don't worry about them anyway because I don't go in the ocean. So, like, I don't think that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fucked up. Itself. I figured, right, the fins are just the only part of the shark worth eating. Big whoop. It's probably not much different from, like, swordfish. That's not true. Apparently, though, I had it backwards. Shark fins aren't even meat. They're made almost entirely of cartilage and collagen. They are yes. the last part we should be eating. That's why it's only made into soup, because without being soaked in broth, it has zero flavor or nutritional value on its own. Their only redeeming quality is their unique mouthfeel due to how stringily the collagen grows in structures mm. called serratotrichia. The texture has been described as some Somewhere between chewy and crunchy, which I find describes most things, actually. Like Other adjectives bacon. present on... Ye oh. Just, just eat bacon. Yeah. Oh, don't compare bacon to shark fin. Wikipedia includes snappy, gelatinous, and sinewy. The exact sensation of eating this substance remains a mystery to me, and the unintended side effect of all this research is that I now really want to try it. Like, it's a big trade. I've got to be the one that's wrong. There is imitation shark fin soup available, but I've already decided that it's not nearly as good. So I've come up with a compromise to this controversy. Everyone on Earth gets just one bite. Say there's 10 bites to a fin, 4 fins to a shark, 200 million sharks die, sure, a necessary casualty but then we can end the practice no. forever all done you can finally rest mr ming come here baby no, the oh, problem Aggie. is if like some of those people who gets to try it end up really really liking it then you just cause a way worse problem yep what? i mean Aggie. i tried this chicken salad wrap recently and now i can't stop eating like behind them and eat them because they're just so fucking delicious and, i mean if that happens to me with like shark fin soup then I'm just gonna be like, I need, I need more. <laughs> I need more. Where? Aki. The aki is a fruit originally from West Africa, which is most commonly associated with Jamaican cuisine, where it appears in such dishes as aki and saltfish. These alien kidneys here are called the arils, and they're the only part of the fruit that's actually eaten. The flavor is on the savory like side, the being described look. as kind of nutty or bean-like. What makes the aki controversial, though, is the effects it can cause when prepared improperly. If the arils are allowed to completely ripen, they're harmless. But if you eat them too early, or don't thoroughly clean off all the non-aril stuff, they can cause Jamaican vomiting sickness. This this disease doesn't sound real. It sounds like it belongs next to Eastern sweats and Tangerian bone grindings, but that's actually an official term. And as for symptoms, it does what it says on the tin. Plus, maybe death. While aki based uh. products aren't outright illegal in the United States, they are very tightly regulated, and the raw fruit itself cannot be imported. So, if you're American and want to try it, your options are fully cooked canned aki or oh. going to Florida, where a few people grow it domestically. Next, we have bird's nest soup. This is another one that I've vaguely heard of, and for years I just assumed the name was a playful metaphor, like ants on a log or shit on a shingle. Turns out, nope, this dish contains an actual bird nest, not like a pile of twigs like I was picturing, but rather a specific type of nest, only made by certain species of swiftlets. These nests are mostly made out of mucins, which are a set of proteins that, among other things, serve to thicken all those wonderful secretions our bodies make. There's a little oh. bit in human saliva, a little bit more in mucus, and in swiftlet saliva, look out, pal. So all the swiftlet does is it finds a nice wall, starts <laughs> laying out fat strings of slobber, <laughs> which dry, and eventually she's got a nice place to roost. That is, right up until some gourmand said, He like, he like. Did that bird just spit out that mess? I'm gonna eat that. Ugh, today I crave bird spit. Ugh, you can keep the eggs though. And they then reconstitute <laughs> it back into its original gelatinous <laughs> texture. Unfortunately, these nests can't enter the U.S. since, believe it or not, eating bird saliva is a great way to catch bird flu. And yes. now the time has come Who to speak. Who would have thought? Boo. Oh, the ortolone. Yeah, the ortolone bird is like, just... Mm. When when I found out how bad they did these birds, I mean, it, he'll probably explain it in detail, but it's it's grotesque. If this is what I'm thinking of, then yeah, this one bothers me too. Speak of the ortolan. The ortolan is a kind of bunting, which is a sort of passerine, which is a type of bird. They're birds. Like many animals, they have a long history of being eaten by the French. But what separates the ortolan from your average squab or pheasant is the unique way in which it is prepared and eaten. They're typically caught with nets and kept in the dark, which causes them to overeat for some reason. Once it's about twice as fat, the entire bird is then thrown into a container of brandy. Alive. 
and sealed in. While this serves to yes. marinate the creature, it also drowns in the process. There By the way, it, instead of trapping them in darkness, you know what they used to do in the old days? They would literally blind them. They would hold the birds and <laughs> knock their eyes out. That's fucked. Yeah. Then they would throw them in a in a in a pen. They would gorge themselves till they were twice as fat, and then they would drown them in brandy. Thereby killing one bird with no stones. The ortolan is then roasted, plucked, and presented whole to the consumer, who inserts the carcass into their mouth, feet the first. Whole thing. As they chew, one hand continues holding the bird's head, while the other picks out the larger bones. This whole ritual is usually performed with a towel or large napkin over one's head. There's a few explanations for the purpose of the towel. Some say it's just there to keep the aromas in, while others say it's there to, quote, shield from God's eyes the shame of such a decadent and disgraceful act. Yes. To which, uh, I remember this, the, the scene in Billions where they did this, and they had the things over, and they just finished, like, eating the Ortolan, and Wags put his thing up, and he says, I just had a religious experience. With every bite, I could feel, the, I could feel the juices just ruminating throughout my mouth. I just had a sudden thing happen. And to which, to which, uh, to which <laughs> Wags then looks over at the chef and he's just like, is there any chance of seconds? <laughs> oh gosh. What are you looking for? Nick is looking for something. Just making sure. It's like the weird thing to me is. I feel like I've seen this video before. I just got the uh, sudden. Like, hmm. It just like came out. It, it just it came really? out. Yeah, it just came out like three days ago. It's still trending. It's still trending even three days later. Damn. Okay. It's just a strange deja vu, I guess, then. Because I was like, have we reacted to this before? And we forgot about it. But no, I guess not. It just came out. No, yeah, it just came out. I've definitely heard of, like, all of these before. Like, yeah. The first time I've heard of them. Yeah. Ortolan, I was very aware of because of... Because of I only heard things. about that, like, last year sometime. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I heard about it uh, from, the, from the show Billions. Which, you know, again... There's, there's like, <laughs> they say one is, they say one is a gift, two is gluttony, and then they're like, how about a third one? And they're like, let's find out. So yeah, on Billions, they, each of the people in that scene ate three Ortolone, like, fully prepared Ortolone birds. My whole thing is I'm just like, okay, putting them in the dark so they gorge themselves is fucked up to start with. Yeah. But, like, drowning them that way? Like, why would you not just, like, mercifully end the bird before yeah, you throw it in Yeah, snap its neck. Like, that's what I would alcohol. do. Like, like, snap its neck, and then just, like, throw it in the brandy. What's the difference? It's like, the difference is one is way more humane. Yeah. Yeah, this one I'm okay with not trying, actually. Notable fans of this dish include, not joking, Bill Cosby and the guy who invented the lobotomy. Ah, to be part of that social club. Our mission mm. is to eat birds whole and then make people not remember things. Killing Ortolans was banned across the EU in 2007. Not for any ethical reason, but because French people did this so much that the entire Ortolan population was threatened. Thankfully, as of 2018, their conservation status is under least concern, so hopefully the French can get back to it soon. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. There you go. Well, that was a. Uh... I mean, I'm not totally surprised with the French just doing crazy things because you know they're the ones that used the guillotine up until sometime in the 90s. Yeah. In the 70s, I think. 70. Yeah. The last time it was used was like the 1970s. Yeah. It was just. <laughs> I remember there was actually a joke about it. It's just like. Like, 1970s is just like, it's like, wow, it's like, wow, I can't believe I actually have a color TV in my li in my living room. It's just like the French getting out the guillotine one last time. <laughs> it's like, 
It's to be honest, like, I mean, for repeat offenders and stuff like that, I can get behind it. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, I'm still a fan of like the wood chipper. And I, the, like, the wood chipper idea? To be honest, I think it depends on what people did. Oh, oh, absolutely. So, like, if, if, if never... someone, like, has just, like, robbed, like, nine million banks, like, nine million times, and it's obvious care. that, like, you know, the only way they're ever going to stop robbing banks is if they stay in jail, but they keep escaping jail every time, so they're just down to the fact that it's like, we got to do away with this guy, like, guillotine is fine. You know, yeah, um, but I mean, even then, I, I think that's a little over the top just for like that example. But I'm, well, like, if someone is like repeatedly hurting others, like, oh, yeah, then I think the gallows is sufficient. Like, I think at least you know, have them be scared that they could end up dropping and hanging there for a little while before I actually go out. You know, for me, I've always been of the opinion of like the worst, worst, worst offenders, you know, the ones I'm talking about. You give them the option of going into wood chipper, and you and you you tell them they're going into wood chipper, and you give them the option, head first or feet first. I don't think you should give them the option if they're that bad. Well, no. I think it should always be feet first. Well, no, and that's the thing. I would I would delight in the ones that say that say feet first, and I'm just like, thank you. You have chosen the best option for us, not for you. It's gonna suck for an X amount of time. And then just, just every time someone mentions a wood chip, you like human beings going into a wood chipper. I think of that scene from uh, Dale and Tuck or Dale and Tucker versus Evil, or Tucker and Dale versus Evil, where uh, Tucker is literally like putting wood away to like throw into the wood chipper. And he moves out the way in just the last second, and that kid dives in to try and stab him, and he dives headfirst into the wood chipper, and he he tries to like pull him out. He pulls out like his torso, like his legs without a torso. He's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> oh god, movie. it is. It's so good. Y'all need to check it out. Uh. Anyway, yeah. So. Those were some banned and controversial foods by Sam O'Neill. If you enjoyed what you saw from the Sammy Man, feel free to uh, you know check him out by clicking his name. Should be right below Nick somewhere on the on the screen. So I'm also surprised he didn't mention the monkey brains. Monkey. Yeah, which That's the whole thing. which may or may not have caused AIDS to outbreak across the world, but we don't we do or do not know that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, Man in Controversial Foods by Sam Onella. Uh, until next time, everyone, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.